Over the past eight months, we've been killing ourselves getting our $100 boat back into ship shape. Now we're down to one final list before we're ready to take her out in the Pacific Ocean. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every month, they introduce their members to cool new products such as outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. The box lineup changes every month and each box has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of that price. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. The best part about it is you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. Before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside. Then you can decide to keep it, swap it for a different box on offer, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. This month, we received the Grow Box, an awesome herb growing kit, and the Chop Box, which has been perfect for cutting up our newly grown fresh herbs. To get 20% off your first box, make sure to click the link in the description and enter code TULA at checkout. Or go to bespokepost.com slash TULA. Thank you, Bespoke Post, so much for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoy this one. Hey, what project are you tackling first? I guess autopilot, figure out what's wrong with the autopilot. I must have disconnected the breaker back behind the panel at some point when I'm trying to clean up these wires. But now I'm just trying to clean up the whole system and reconnect um, the autopilot power to the breaker. So we're just trying to identify the wires, clean everything up a little bit. It's a mess under here, like an absolute mess. Could it actually be much cleaner? Yeah, there's okay. some things that are done wrong, and that's night and day. And then there's some things that could just be neater, which isn't super important, but it Hey, it just helps understand like where things go and stuff. I'm paying attention to the stuff that's wrong. That'll also help fix the autopilot and help us wire the inverter as well. Okay, so nothing that's really far off from us do this? Nope. This one is the fuse. It was hooked up wrong. I think it was like hot wired straight to the other terminal or something like that. It was hooked up wrong and that's why I disconnected it. And again, more stuff is hooked up wrong back here too. Like we shouldn't have this stuff. They have all these little jumper cables across, which I, I don't know what the rule is with that, but like ideally it's just these metal strips that connect the, the whole hot side. But I don't know. Again, bunch of things to be cleaned up and I'm just still trying to identify and fix the autopilot one. All right, we got the autopilot going. Yep. Well, that's more than we were getting yesterday. That's a little electric pump down there. Turning the, uh, the rudder, the rudders. Okay, well then make it make it, it, does, it doesn't turn the wheel. The autopilot doesn't turn the wheel on this boat because it's a little electric pump that pumps the hydraulic fluid that moves the rudders. The wheel doesn't have to the wheel doesn't turn. The same way like when you're steering down here, the wheel up there doesn't turn and vice versa. You're just strictly pumping the fluid. How are we gonna know if it works? I think Debbie doesn't like the beep of the autopilot. Alright, it's off, don't worry. So how are we gonna know if it actually works? Test it out. I mean it worked on the way up here, it just wasn't super it's kind of wandery, but there's a bunch of settings we can play with to fix that. Jenny, you want to help me mark this off the list? Auto pilot. Check. Woohoo! Now what's next? Um, inverter. All right, you guys. I think I finished wiring the inverter. Turning the battery switch on. DC battery switch. <laughs> Everything goes on the water pump, vacuum pump. Is it seven o'clock exactly? A little dry bilge that goes on at seven o'clock every day on a timer. You see? There it is. And then it just runs back to the sump and empties out in the sump. Should be pumping faster though. Anyway, I think I got the inverter all wired up. Here's the moment of truth. If I turn this switch here to ship power, so I wired it into there, so once I turn this switch, we should have AC power on the boat. 
from the inverter. There's no shore power plugged in right now or anything. So hopefully we don't have any sparks or anything either. Oh wait, no, I gotta turn the switch on down below too. <laughs> Let's try that. Yeah, I gotta turn the Victron on to on. So hopefully, yes, inverter. All right. How do you know you heard the fridge turn on? The microwave. Sweet. You did it? I think so. Smelly smoke? Don't say that. <laughs> Are you ready to go over to our friends? find the marker anywhere. <laughs> oh, is this one? Is it red? Yeah. Where'd you find it? Found it. In the drawer. That is our project for today. And this is the unit we're going to be installing. So when we first bought this boat, it had six big antennas up there. There was two separate antennas for an old Loran system. There was two separate antennas, each for their own VHF system. One in the upper helm, one down in uh, the lower helm station. And then there was at least one for an SSB. Maybe the other one was also for an SSB radio, which the previous owners wanted to keep. So we sent that SSB back to them and all those antennas were completely shot they were just raw fiberglass but like just eaten away by all the uv and just flaky and degraded so we took them all down and i already mounted two new antennas up here one's going to be strictly for vhf in the upper helm the other will be our vhf slash ais dedicated antenna for the vesper unit i have both those antennas up there already and the wire that's coming down to the lower helm for the Vesper unit is already run. I actually have it right here. White one sticking out right there and it's coming down and it makes it all the way to right about here. So why are we going with this Vesper Cortex unit? We could go with just a regular normal VHF and that's all fine and we will actually have at least one other regular VHF as a backup or just in the upper helm as an additional VHF. But basically this unit is not just a VHF, it's also an AIS. It's an AIS class B transponder. So it sends and receives our boat's AIS signal. Well, sends our boat's AIS signal and then we can receive other boat's AIS signal with it as well. Other VHFs actually can also do something similar but they can only receive AIS signals. So you can see where other boats are but it doesn't send out your own AIS signal for other boats to see. Better than nothing, but this is the best of all worlds. Not only that, but if you have the Vesper app download on your phone, you can monitor your boat remotely with this system as well. Um, so a bunch of super cool features. It's got an anchor alarm. It's got a port for a GPS antenna. So we'll have GPS hooked up to this unit as well. And then obviously it'll have like DSC calling and stuff like that. Basically for those of you who don't know boats, like DSC calling is like you could click on another signal that's connected to the ship's MMSI number. It's all sort of confusing. But basically you could click on a ship and like call them directly instead of using channel 16 and like hailing them. You can like call their 
vessel directly. You can also use DSC as an emergency signal. So like, God forbid we had a mayday, uh, we could use this button here. It would use DSC to let people know that we were in trouble and then it would use our GPS signal as well to show exactly uh, where we are. Does that make sense? A lot of cool features. Honestly, it looks pretty simple to set up. So all we're gonna do today is basically plug in our VHF AIS antenna right here. And then we'll, this has a little splitter, so we'll probably plug this in as well. It's a little splitter to go to another VHF radio down here. So we'll have this unit, we'll have another VHF radio down here as a backup, and then we'll also have a dedicated, like isolated VHF unit in the upper helm as well. And then we'll also hook up power. And then it's got other ports for like, you could hook it up to NEMA, and then for your sensors, it, like if you want to hook up a bunch of sensors and stuff like that, and then audio, you could hook up a remote speaker as well. Oh, and we'll also hook up our GPS antenna to there. So that's what we'll do today. Get this all hooked up, get our VHF AIS working. Uh, that's the priority. And then from there, we could mess around with some other features in the future. All right, so we have our directions, our hand, set computer unit bracket for the handset power i think some brackets and stuff i believe wires cable here's the i believe this is sends out a wi-fi signal oh maybe that's power cord that's power cord so basically i'm thinking i'll probably just mount it back there like not directly under the window just in case it leaks but like a little bit in front of the window it's not ideal because it takes up that dash space but there are still already holes drilled through this dash area so i can run the wires underneath still it'll still be a pretty clean look like it's a pretty nice clean looking unit not too big um, much smaller than the old old original electronics that were up there so i'll probably just mount it up there it'll still be out of the way as well Is this the front and this is the back? It, there's no front or back, it's just ports on both sides. Cool. Also, this is a little dusty. Yeah, it's so dusty. <laughs> we gotta clean up our whole dash. <laughs> Underneath this is actually really nice. That's why I put the paper here, because I was like, I don't know, just to protect it. So this is where the old old VHF was mounted. We'll probably mount it somewhere up there now. This is a much better vertical surface for this device, I think. There we go. Oh, it's lit up. All right, I think we're good. The lights just went on. So we should be all set. Let's turn the handset on and see what we got going on. Let's just skip the setup for now. Waiting for GPS. So last but not least, we're gonna mount the Vesper GPS antenna here. And it came with a whole bunch of different mounting options, but we already have this pole that an old GPS antenna was mounted onto. Um, and luckily the threads of one of the options mount uh, matches up perfectly. So we'll just use the same pole because it requires no extra drilling and that's always good. And then we'll just run the cable. We'll have to drill another hole for the cable and use like a cable gland or whatever. Um, but at least that's the only one. And I've already attached the tape cable extension here to the GPS antenna. And then we'll run that all the way back down and into the Cortex hub. And then we'll have GPS hooked up. Ooh. 
we just ran the GPS cable from the antenna down through this whole thing. We'll have to clean it up a little bit, but we're plugging it into the unit now through this little GPS port. Okay. GPS antenna is hooked up. Collision alert. Port oh. down. Collision alert. Collision alert. Port down. Interesting. Is it dead? I don't know. Yeah, it probably is dead. Mountain Mist 1, this is Mountain Mist 2, I read you loud and clear. Your Mountain Mist 1, you ding dong. <laughs> Mountain Mist 2, this is Mountain Mist 1, I read you loud and clear. Did it sound perfectly good? Scratching no, like that. Well, I'm scratching galvanic. Get galvanization onto the deck. I'm not scratching the actual deck. last few days before we leave the dock one thing we have to do is mark the chain we never did that when we got the chain on the boat but we have to mark it and make sure that we know how much chain we're putting out so how often are we going to put marks i think we should do at 50 feet and then every 25 feet from there Have all the chain out. We got some zip ties. Billy actually got rainbow zip ties, so we're gonna do them in rainbow order so they're easy to tell. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I'll put this on while you're doing that. How many zip ties do you want on each? Mark. I don't know. I think you should probably do them on a few different lengths. This is the biggest anchor and shackle and everything we've ever used, had, owned. Ready 
to put it all back in. I have my rainbow organized. Big day today, folks. It was a big day today and a little bit of a nightmare. Selling a car that is registered out of state in California is very complicated. Well, it really doesn't need to be, but people buying the car wanted to be extra, extra sure that they weren't getting screwed and that the car would pass smog and would pass inspection and all this stuff. So we were like running around all day. And then they wanted to make sure we they weren't gonna in incur like any other fees from buying a vehicle out of state so we literally waited in line with them at the dnv for hours so they could make sure just so the lady could answer the question no you just pay for this this and this and if there's anything it's not big at all but we did it we can cross it off the list um no we have a, another vehicle on so i've discovered something that you're gonna like to see this light still isn't working the other one works already maybe you're so fast. But, uh... Doesn't there, have a bulb. This one has power to it, but, yeah, the bulb is bad. Are you really about to check off an item right after we just checked off a different item? Yeah, I think so. Well, don't jinx it. And we also have, I think our LED bulbs will fit in here. Yeah, I should. <laughs> what do you think over there? These are short. She said that sounds like a wrap up to work. <laughs> Did that work? Maybe. Moment of truth. You just watch that bulb. Let's see if it goes out. No? Dang it. Is that switch still on, by the way? Run lights. Yeah, it's on. So that that's our switch, and, but we didn't realize that there's another switch right here <laughs> that says oh. nav light. So they both have to be on, or maybe they don't. Maybe it's just this one. But like right now, the other light's on and the and the stern light's on. Oh, the stern light works too. Yeah. I guess it is. It's just hard to tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. That one's on. Sweet. Cock must mean something is working. We got it working, you wanna see? Well, should I put it on first? Or you wanna see first? I wanna see. Ah. We got a light, baby. Nice. Do you wanna do the honors of crossing it off, or should I? I wanna do it. <laughs> you can cross off the van. And just like that, we have almost everything checked off our must-do list. There's just one more major project to get done before we set sail for the wild Pacific.